great lecture slides are priceless. Just, uh, they don't have to have a lot of detail on them, but as long as they have the main points for exams or for uh, generally what we need to know, then it helps so much because the textbooks are thick and you really can't read that much in um, the few weeks that we have them and you can't go through 50 pages for one week when you have four other subjects as well. So uh, great lecture slides are priceless. Um, probably one thing is that um, sometimes they would have assumed knowledge. Um, they assume students should know certain knowledge and um, they just go through the whole thing without realizing that none of the students know what they're talking about. Uh, it's probably one thing they should realize that um, maybe um, we've gone through it, we've gone through the topics or ideas that are needed um, in the previous few years, but you know, students' memories, they don't always work as they wanted to. So probably they need to like just uh, help students to get their memory back, just first few lectures, perhaps. Um, second thing, probably um, all students, if they can get into the unit, um, the course, then they should have reached some certain standard. But I think lecturers should still realize, be aware that not everyone's at the same level. So the understanding of the subject, um, the memory, they'll work differently and they should try to adjust it, adjust how they teach to help everyone out there. Maybe they should open the, say, start a tutorial with some, say, personal reflections about where, uh, what kind of topics we have been covering during the semester so far, where we're going from, from here, and also what's the expectation, like what's the future directions for the course. One thing, it depends on, um, I, I guess, um, going through a summary so everyone will know, so even for the people who's falling behind, um, after that summary, they'll kind of get a general idea of what's going on and they might be able to interact in that sense. So I find that um, it's also important to do a summary at the end of lecture notes and to just briefly spend five minutes on last week's lecture. That way it's kind of um, coherent and structured and then it kind of um, reminds you of the things you learned and what's important and that helps you study for your final exam instead of reading the whole textbook and so many things to decipher. For the lecturer, like for the lecturer, um, the first most important thing obviously is the big picture because um, my personal experience is that for some subjects you go in, every single lecture you go in, um, they just start a new topic without connecting to the previous one and you really don't see where we're at for this subject. So at the end, when you summarise everything together, you still, you still don't know exactly why we're learning this first and the last topic last. So I think for the lecturer to be very professional in terms of teaching is that they need to mention exactly where we're at for each lecture. So, okay, we're studying a new topic. Why are we doing this? Because this is connected to the previous topic and what's the use in real life, stuff like that. That's the first thing I think is really important, the connection between topics and the big picture. I think some of the critical points that they should be aware of is that having, for lecturers, having a structured um, lesson, it's always good to have lecture notes that's posted online for students before the lecture so we can have, um, have a look at um, what's expected for that lesson. And during the course, just having a structured lesson rather than just going around so students kind of can follow everything. I think the lecturers must understand that everyone has different learning styles and to be able to convey their message and teach different ways so people are able to grasp that. Um, I also think that people learn at a different pace compared to other people, so they've got to consider that, maybe go at like a medium, steady pace so other people 
um, are able to follow. And those that are really slow can seek other help after consult like in consultation hours, etc. Everyone works differently and I think the important part of teaching is being able to explain the same thing in a few different ways, which is, isn't always like, easy, but I think it's an important skill to have, just to be able to ex yeah, explain the same thing in different ways, in different methods, to, so everyone can learn them in their most effective way that they can. I think one important thing is the needs of the students. So, I mean, there's so many students, we need to be able to know um, that each student learns differently. And so the lecturer needs to be able to take that into account um, when conveying their information. So being able to do, say, um, like a mix of group work, a mix of visual, um, so on the lecture slides. Um, and for those who learn through um, hearing things, they need to say things um, a certain way. Um, because some, I think some lecturers have a, have a tendency to focus either on talking. And so for the people that aren't that um, um, perfect or that, that aren't good at learning through hearing, um, then that disadvantages them. So they need to be able to incorporate a mix of things, I think, to be able to... Um, so that's one important factor. A lecturer definitely needs to be articulate. He needs to have some sort of colour. Sense of humour doesn't go, doesn't go astray. Um, I think they need to understand that students can switch off during a lecture if it's very dry. There needs to be some sort of interaction even though it's only a lecture. It's, a bit, it's supposed to be for tutorials, but there still needs to be you know, some open questions in lectures, I believe. So the interaction, I think, is really important for the lecturer to actually introduce some kind of say, I don't know, question time during the lecture at the end or at the beginning or during the lecture or say a group activity 